So yeah, basically that's the reason why we founded then the techno technological company, which is focused mainly on technological projects. And sorry, I have a little bit to fasten it up because we lost some time and due to the other schedules, so um, I will shorten this a bit, so. All right, um, next slide, please. And what I want you to show today is basically one of our customers' work. Um, you can also skip this one, please. And how we wanted to work um, through the schedule is that I first show you the status quo, how uh, the cu um, customer started using VR for his approach. Then we look at some benefits and some disadvantages of it, and especially why we have chosen VR for this type of learning. So please continue. So at that point, the cust um, I will illustrate this we are just a sewing machine because I am not allowed to disclose any other information because my um, customer wants to have some competitive advantage um, towards his other customers, so um, competitors. So I just use the sewing machine as an example, right? It just to illustrate how we incorporated this. So. For this specific um, task, he wanted to have um, tutorials, exams, manuals, books, stuff like that. A lot of static material for learning the sewing machine. How to assemble the sewing machine and how to disassemble and how to repair and all the other stuff. And basically this is how he had worked till then. So he discovered some disadvantages while working um, via this way. And one of the disadvantages is that you have here static content and limited engagement. So maybe every one of you has made the experience that if you learn a new tutorial, for example, for Unity or Unreal or whatever it may be, you're looking passively at some kind of video and after you are asked to repeat the steps, you're stuck somewhere. So you have basically no engagement with the topic that you want to learn, right? And this is a big disadvantage because you can't recall that what you have learned. So, and at some point it might not be really motivating to look at two, three hours long tutorial videos, right? And also reading through manuals and technical details and yeah, so. And also what this led to is this lack of interactivity. What we now nowadays know is if you want to keep your knowledge, then it's very important that you are able to recall it. And it's also very important to have some kind of interaction. Like I do this and then happens that, right? Then you can immediately understand and grasp what is really happening and how you can understand this machine a little bit better, right? So. Yeah, and then what I mentioned earlier, the static content and without any hands-on experience, it just takes a lot, lot more time to learn and understand this complicated sewing machine, right? It contains thousands of components, has different names, and now you are, have the task to build it together, to disassemble it. No way. So it takes months to really be into that machine, right? So. And that is what my customer have learned at some point that when he has new colleagues, then he have to definitely, it takes a long, long, long time that they understand everything. And he has only one person who can really explain how this machine works, the project manager. And the project manager is usually responsible for so many tasks in his own division that he doesn't have the time to explain you everything, right? So. What they end up then is maybe one meeting in one week, and basically that's it. So they discovered a lot of issues which can be solved via VR. So after some, I would say, first initial talks with the customer, we then decided to test it out via VR approach. And this is what we have done. So at first we started with one small user interface, just for exploring the sewing machine. It's just there, just for exploring, without any task, without any complicated stuff. Just make some explode view, implode view, basic animations. Also choosing environments that the people can um, yeah, 
different environments like projected onto their own workplace and stuff like that. Very simple. So what this allowed the people is just to explore all the components interactively and just to understand what is, um, how this sewing machine is built out. And one thing that is here quite important to mention is that my customer didn't have something simple as a sewing machine. That was a large, huge machine which is not easily to work on, to explode it and to tweak stuff because it's expensive. Basically then what we have also done in the next step is that we integrated some quizzes, some tasks and also some um, other exploration gamification features like for example um, point at the button of the sewing machine and then if you button it you get immediate feedback was it the right button or was it another component. And basically what you have here without any prior knowledge you have direct feedback. Was my question wrong or was it right? You have direct feedback how, um, on the machine and you learn really fast through this approach. This is called fast recall principle from the learning psychology. And yeah, and then as mentioned, like small tasks that we have is for example to assemble or to disassemble the machine in one minute. Or when you are very good uh, or when you at the beginning in five minutes or explorative approach where you can just take all the components and build them together how you like. So we have there three different approach which help you basically to understand how this machine is connected. So um, that led us to advantages. What we discovered after the first prototype of um, implementing this small gamified learning VR solution is we had there finally some engagement. We moved the people from static learning to immersive learning. They really interacted with the machine and one of the greatest things that we discovered is when we people let the first time to play with the real machine, they felt completely familiar with it. That wasn't like, you know, this sit tutorial situation where you get this task that you have to do and you don't understand anything completely cancelled out. So the people were really fast at uh, um, to transfer it to their real world scenario. Also what we definitely can tell is that we had an improved retention. So the people understood the, the quite how the materials are named, what the materials actually are, how the thing is built together. Like all the things that miss if you're just reading a book because you don't remember every single thing. Now, as you are forced to use it to complete the challenge, now you are able to give a lightning fast answer. And yeah, um, real world scenario, basically yes, it's completely realistic. The graphics are also very nice. We used nice shaders. We used definitely realistic graphics and put a lot of effort that it looks really, really realistic that we have an immersive, immersive, Im immersive experience and the interesting part about this is that the project manager who had to school the people individually often and also asked um, when the participants asked the question about the sewing machine they're way way more qualified than before so we had after this learning we had much better qualified colleagues than before and also reduced time so instead of spending months or weeks of, this was quite easy, quite fast for them to learn and grasp. So, and yeah, um, maybe also small benefit that they had are safety benefits, obviously, like in this machine from the customer, it was sometimes dangerous to operate it, pushing different buttons. It can definitely be very hazardous and from our point, as we are working in the VR domain, that wasn't the case. You could experiment, explore it, you can destroy it, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you didn't have any yeah, hazardous experience and the customer hasn't lost a ton of money just because somebody is uh, damaging his machines, right? And the best thing was, I think, the scalability. Like, the customer was based in Florida and another division of his work was in uh, Hamburg. So basically we developed the software in Zurich and rolled it out to Hamburg and Florida. 
So basically, he bought some headsets in Florida and gave them out to his personnel. So quite easy to scale. And also one thing that I also added here, like we put some analytics to uh, his learning progress so that the user has some kind of overview how much of his process, uh, how much of this topic he has covered. And also like for him, um, for the project manager that he knows, okay, how many trainings have been done, right? All right, um, yeah, and the last thing that I want to talk about you today is um, what was our development process and how we get there. Like the colleague um, asked, it was definitely very collaborative. It was, from the beginning on, is something we had to learn how this machine works, at least at some high level, not in the details, and also understand how is the process in his company. And then we choose directly one process where we can help um, project managers to ease out the work a little bit. And that's what we have done. So um, next slide, please. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so we first started with a small draft and the concept of the project. We pitched it to the customer and then we started immediately building it. Like first one prototype, fast approach, and that was basically phase one. And then afterwards it built it up. Gradually we had at the end some backend stuff uh, where we had an overview of um, analytical stuff, stuff like that. And then it, it went like ongoing development, like um, phase one, phase two, next release, till we automated the whole process. So quite easy, I would say. We, 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 we started very small. We didn't start with the full concept, which is crazy and contains a lot of features that you don't need. No, we started very small, put the small prototype directly to the colleagues, tested it out. We didn't find out early what works well, what doesn't work well, and then continued with the project. And yeah, basically that's it. That was our approach, how we um, delivered a great software to our customer for learning VR using 3D, um, different tool sets. And yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>